This is Amores 1.11. It is the first in a pair of poems that Ovid writes. And in this one, he is uh, he's infatuated with a girl named Corinna. You can see her name down there in line five. And he is really, though, addressing this poem to Nape, this other person, who is, we find out, Corinna's slave girl, her, her Ankila. And she's not just any Ankila. She's she's Nequanquilos inter habenda. She's pretty special, not to be considered just any old slave girl. Um, she's pretty special, and he's going to talk about that at length because he's trying to butter her up so that she'll she'll take a note from Ovid to Corinna. And in one point twelve, we find out what happens after he she gives him uh, she gives her the note, and Nape returns. And so we'll we'll have to find out here. But this whole thing here in lines one through eight. Basically, it's it's one sentence. I mean, you can see it with the period here at the end. Um, and one through six basically is him calling her all sorts of wonderful things. And then finally we get occupe and pair fair. We finally get the what he's asking her to do. So occupe, receive, and then carry, basically carry out this 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 note. Okay, so let's go back to Nape here and let's see how Ovid describes her as he's buttering her up to get him, get her on his side. Um, the first thing, coligrin kertoset in ordene pon recrines. Um, we know coligra means to like bind together, to gather. So to gather uncertain somethings, we're not really sure what they are yet, we know they're masculine, and in order to ponera. So we see coligra and ponera, and to put in order, and then finally we get the crines. So delayed there for anticipation, but her hair. So to bind or to gather her incertos crines, her unkempt or disheveled hair, and to put it in order, basically to, you know, to style and comb her hair. And then we get a really important word here, the enjambment of docta. So docta from dokeo dokeira means to teach. And so this is the, the perfect passive participle of that, literally. So having been taught, and it's feminine singular to agree with Nape. Hey, Nape, having been taught to arrange and to place her, un, her, her uncertain, her disheveled hair in order, right? To gather her disheveled hair and to put it in, uh, in order, to comb it. And then we get another, and by the way, Nape is vocative as is docta and habenda and all of these other words that we're using to describe her because we're addressing her. Hey, Nape, you, skilled in doing these things. And ne, and then we get ankylos, so slave girls. And we don't know why it's accusative yet, but the next word is inter. And so hopefully we realize that this really should be inter ankylos. So we have a, what's called an anastrophe, right? The inversion of the usual word order. So among slave girls, and then the ne, of course, goes with the verb. And this is from habeo habera, to have or to hold. And the form here, hopefully we recognize that form, is uh, the, the gerunder gerundive, the nd. But notice there's no causa or gratia. There's no, you know, for the sake of having or holding. Um, there's no like habenda est, must be held. Um, there's none of those sort of normal uses of the gerund or the gerund that we have here. So maybe, and, and this is what it is, is it's really just the plain old future passive participle. So the best way to translate that in English is to be held, or here maybe to be considered. But ne habenda, not to be considered among slave girls. And what Ovid means here is that she shouldn't be thought of as just any old slave girl. So skilled in gathering uncertain hair and placing it in order and not to be considered among slave girls. And in the ministeries, in the duties or the services, and then for TY, probably we can imagine that's genitive, of secret something, and we don't have to go too far to, here's another genitive, so of secret night. And then we have cognita. And from cognosco, cognoscora, to, to get to know or to learn. So here maybe having uh, having been known. And so, okay, um, 
having been known in the services of Secret Night, but just like in the first couplet, we have the enjambment of Utilis. So known, useful, or maybe how about known to be useful? Maybe we can throw that essay in there. Known to be useful in the duties or the services of Secret Night. Um, it's also worth noting here that it's not really night that's secret. It's really the, the ministeries that are secret, right? And the, the covert or the furtive or the stealthy secret duties of night. So this is called a transferred epithet where the grammar agrees with one word, but really probably we're, we're describing another. Um, so she's skilled in binding hair and placing it in order, not to be considered among slave girls, any old slave girls, and known to be useful in uh, nighttime services. And she's ingeniosa. So here she's clever. She's talented at dandis notis. So here we have another ND, gerunda gerundive. Well, here it's a gerundive because it comes with nota, notes, right, letters. So she is clever, gifted, talented in giving notes. Often, saipe saipe, which is such a, a neat repetition, right? Because if something happens often, then it happens somewhat repeatedly. So often... And then the infinitive winnier to come to me, hesitating, and then hortata. So here's another vocative word describing nape. She was docta, she's ne habenda, she was cognita utilis, she's ingeniosa, and here she's hortata, having encouraged uh, or maybe um, having urged. And then we get Corinna, having urged Corinna to come to me and then dubitantem. Now, here's the thing, dubitantem, when you're reading this left to right, I would assume that it would agree with May, right, to me hesitating. Maybe that's the case. Maybe Ovid is nervous. and But probably if Corinna needs encouragement, she's probably the one that's hesitating. But the nice thing is that it's probably both, right? He's nervous. Uh, and of course, this is why he's buttering up Nape, because he wants her to give Corinna this note. Um, he doesn't want to give it to her himself, I guess, or maybe he just can't. But he's nervous about it. He's nervous about his love. So having often encouraged Corinna, hesitating to come to me, maybe also hesitating. Often, and here's another one of these words, reperta, having been discovered or found faithful. So just like remember we had known to be useful, maybe this is found, hey, you, nape, uh, known or found, discovered to be faithful. And then we have laboranti and mihi. And I don't know about you guys, but my students always uh, mix up, always kind of forget that that's that dative I ending from the third declension. So known or discovered to be faithful to me laboring, struggling, working. Okay, so we butter Nape up. Now, finally, this is what we're asking her to do. Receive. And I guess here, and, maybe, uh, pair fair, right? So receive and pair fair to your mistress. And then we've got pair eratas tabelas. So, receive and carry and and really do it right pair fair right carry thoroughly carry all the way out carry to your mistress these tabellas my tablets my notes having been thoroughly inscribed there's that pair again he's not writing a little note he's writing a big note it is that tablet is filled with his his words hopefully his his kind words and um, assuaging words, um, but yeah, thoroughly, literally plowed, right? Aro, arare, to plow, but thoroughly written on, and then mana here is just in the morning. So he wrote it that morning. So receive those tablets and carry them to your mistress and pele, there's another infinitive here, and do away with obstantes mores, delays getting in your way. 
and sedula here is an adjective, um, but you know it's right next to the verb, and so as is often we can take it kind of adverbially, and sedula maybe attentively, carefully do away with anything that gets in your way, delays, obstantes, getting in your way.